Good afternoon on today's Angry Alien Bulletin. You know, perhaps we better reconsider retiring the Hubble Space Telescope because, once again, it has made an astonishing discovery. It has tracked down the point of origin for the most powerful radio signal we have ever detected. And like so many of the signals we're finding these days, we have no natural explanation as to what caused this one either. And meanwhile, a little closer to home, well, a lot closer to home actually, are we seeing evidence of a galaxy under construction? Well, we don't have any natural explanations for what the James Webb Telescope recently found, a galaxy that seems to be in the process of building another galaxy. All of this and more coming at you on The Angry Astronaut right now. Good afternoon, and once again, welcome to The Angry Astronaut. So we've got two very bizarre topics to talk about today. The first I've talked about a number of times before in the field of fast radio bursts, and we have picked up yet another one. We've been able to identify exactly where this fast radio burst came from. It just seems impossibly far away, and also from an impossibly early stage in the development of the universe, and yet there it is. But what's even more interesting, in my opinion, is evidence to suggest that there is a galaxy currently under construction, or rather a galaxy that was under construction about 250 million years ago. Now, many, many theories have emerged in regards to stellar engineering and how incredibly advanced civilization organizations might be able to build stars, modify them, tweak them, or perhaps even manipulate entire galaxies to suit their own purposes. The more advanced a civilization becomes, the longer a civilization is in existence, the greater their capacity to do things like this. And yet, we have seen no evidence throughout the cosmos to suggest that anyone has actually become this advanced. Or have we? Well, it appears, based on a recent discovery that we've made, that there is a galaxy currently under construction. Now, whether that construction process is natural or an artificial one is something that's up for debate, of course, but the fact remains that a galaxy about 250 million light years away is in the process of building another galaxy. And we have no precedent in nature anywhere else for something like this occurring. It is unique, it is strange, and perhaps it might be evidence of stellar engineering in process. In the summer of 2022, the Australian Square Kilometre Array Pathfinder radio telescope detected the most powerful fast radio burst in history, at least the most powerful one that we have ever discovered. However, its point of origin remains something of a mystery because it came from such a distant part of the universe, we really couldn't identify where it was coming from, except for perhaps some sort of vague blob. However, with the assistance of the Hubble Space Telescope, we were able to lock in on exactly where the signal came from, and it just made the mystery that much more confusing. Hubble's images suggest that the blob that they originally thought this thing was coming from, in other words, some sort of amorphous developing galaxy, was actually seven distinct galaxies in incredibly close proximity to one another. As a matter of fact, these these seven galaxies are so close to one another that they could all fit inside the Milky Way. According to one of the researchers, quote, there are some signs that the group members are interacting. In other words, they could be trading material or possibly on a path to merging. These groups of galaxies, called compact groups, are incredibly rare environments in the universe and are the densest galaxy scale structures we know of. This interaction could trigger bursts of star formation, which would indicate that whatever created this fast radio burst, known as FRB 2022-0610A, is associated with a fairly recent population of stars. 
Now on the surface, this would suggest that fast radio bursts may indeed be coming from young, highly energetic neutron stars called magnetars, that this kind of environment might very well be conducive to the production of magnetars, and that might be what's causing this particular fast radio burst, although it would have to be a hell of a magnetar, because a fast radio burst that we traced to a magnetar in our own galaxy was many, many times weaker than this one. That being the case though, another repeating fast radio burst known as FRB 2020-0120E, well that one is coming from a globular cluster that's orbiting the galaxy M81, a globular cluster that has only old stars. No young energetic magnetars, no young energetic stars of any kind, and yet there is a repeating fast radio burst coming from that globular cluster, which again seems to completely debunk the idea that fast radio bursts at least exclusively come from this particular source. So what are we actually seeing here? Well, the simple answer is we have no idea. All of the theories that have been proposed up to this point have fallen flat except perhaps for the artificial one. And for those of you unfamiliar with the artificial one that was presented by Dr. Avi Loeb and his associates a few years ago, the idea is that a high energy radio beam that sweeps briefly across our line of sight would appear like a sudden microsecond burst of radio energy. And a high energy radio beam like this created by an extraterrestrial civilization would be extremely useful for pushing a light sail, or more specifically, a radio sail, to speeds as high as 50% of the speed of light. As a matter of fact, Dr. Loeb crunched some numbers and determined that if you had access to a solar array or a megastructure approximately twice the size of our planet, gathering up solar energy from a star the size of our own, well, you would be able to gather enough energy to create such a high energy radio beam and push up to half a million tons worth of payload up to 50% of the speed of light. Huge ships indeed could be plying interstellar distances as we speak right now, driven by the forces generated by fast radio bursts or what we think are fast radio bursts. And why do we see artificial fast radio bursts all over the universe, presumably being created by different civilizations? Well, perhaps all civilizations, or many anyway, eventually come to the conclusion that this is the most efficient way to drive large payloads to relativistic speeds and ultimately they all start doing it. And if that's the case, this could be the earliest example of an interstellar civilization that we have ever found. Because this cluster of galaxies is just over 5 billion years old when the universe was less than half its current age. However, it's worth keeping in mind that our solar system is about about 4 billion years old, meaning that a civilization that sprung up on perhaps some of the first stars that ever formed in the early universe could have become very, very advanced indeed after 5 billion years. We'll see what develops as time goes on, I'll keep you informed. But we also need to talk about something that's happened a lot closer to home. And by closer, it's still a long ways away, about 250 million light years, but a strange phenomena indeed that we've actually known about for some time, but we just got a much better image of what is actually going on. And regardless of whether this is a natural phenomenon or not, it is very strange indeed. What you're looking at here is galaxy NGC 541, which is in a tight cluster of a hundred or more galaxies called Abel 194, located about 250 million light years away in the constellation Cetus the Whale, approximately one degree southeast of the star 43 Ceti. The cluster's heart harbors 10 objects from the new general catalog, shining anywhere from magnitude 12 to 13.5. 
five. Seven of these are arranged in a line along with several fainter objects, and they stretch across approximately 30 arc minutes of sky like a piece of extra galactic thread. The cluster's brightest member is also the strangest. As I said before, this is NGC 541, which has a long radio jet emanating from it that appears to be coming from its supermassive black hole. These sorts of radio jets exist with really energetic black holes, and of course, supermassive black holes can create really powerful radio jets. However, this particular jet is interacting with a blue dwarf galaxy that is pretty damn unique. So unique, in fact, that it's called Minkowski's object, named after the astronomer who discovered it. And what makes it so unusual is the fact that the stars in this object all tend to be roughly the same age, about seven and a half million years old, which means very recently, NGC 541 began to form stars in this region of space, that is to say, for some reason, this galaxy's supermassive black hole emitted this extremely energetic jet of radio energy, which plowed into moderately dense warm gas around Murkowski's object, which by the way is thousands of parsecs away from the galaxy, and the shock compressed and heated the gas, causing it to become energized or ionized. And as the ionized gas reverts from its higher energy energy state to a lower energy state, energy leaves the cloud in the form of radiation. And as the clouds cooled, they collapsed, giving rise to star birth. In other words, we're talking a group of 20 million stars, all of which were essentially created at about the same time. Now, this is an amazing phenomenon, one that is very, very rare in the cosmos. Although radio jets from black holes are fairly commonplace, very, very seldom do they create star formation, especially in another object in essentially a different galaxy. And yet that is what is happening here. NGC 541 is building a new galaxy in a cloud of nearby gas. Now here's the question. If this is being done artificially, why would a civilization do this? Well, there's actually a very compelling reason for this, assuming, of course, that the process can be very well controlled. Currently, in just about every galaxy, you have a chaotic environment that can actually be extremely dangerous to organic life and to long-lived civilizations. You have black holes passing through different regions of the galaxy that suddenly emit enormous amounts of X-ray radiation. You also have supernovas, which can endanger any form of life within about a thousand light years from the supernova blast. These are the sorts of things that would be really nice to avoid if you want to build a new civilization or if you simply want to create an environment that's conducive for new life forms to evolve in peace without being being destroyed by these sorts of incidents. So why not build a galaxy with all the stars being roughly the same age, roughly the same type, all of them very stable, very predictable, not prone to go supernova or to collapse into black holes? Now, the reason that Hubble imaged Murkowski's object and NGC 541 was to try to get a better sense of how star formation occurs in this region and what sort of star formation is taking place, and also, of course, the properties of the jet that is triggering this star formation. It would be very interesting to discover that all of the new stars, or at least most of them that are coming into existence, are the same types of stars, perhaps all red dwarfs, or perhaps all G-class main sequence stars, or F main sequence stars. If they turn out to all be extremely similar, well, that would be very suspicious indeed. Although, I really doubt that any serious astronomer is going to look at these kinds of possibilities and talk about it, at least publicly. That's a great way to get your reputation destroyed in the current scientific environment. But these are the kinds of questions that we need to be asking when natural explanations begin to fall flat. 
And this is not the only suspicious thing that we've recently detected in association with star formation. Something else is happening a lot closer to home in the Orion Nebula. As I reported in a previous video, we have found quite a number of rogue planets wandering about the Orion Nebula, where, by the way, new stars are being born. Okay, that's not terribly unusual. We should expect independent planets to form in this kind of environment. However, 9% of the total planets discovered have actually been binaries. That is to say, planets very similar in size and orbiting one another in pairs. We have no equivalent, no precedent whatsoever for this sort of thing to be happening. And yet, there they are. 40 different binary pairs of rogue planets gravitationally bound to one another wandering about in a region of space where new star formation is taking place. Could it be possible that an extremely advanced civilization is trying to manipulate or control the types of stars that are evolving in this nebula? Well, that is a bit of a far-fetched idea, but I don't think we need to put it beyond the realm of possibility. Once again, if we are to assume that civilizations have evolved and thrived in the many billions of years that have passed since the galaxy's original formation, then it's not beyond the realm of possibility that we could be observing the activities of civilizations who are capable of building artificial planets or capable of stellar engineering. And when we see things like this that defy natural explanation, we should start looking at artificial possibilities, at least until we do come up with a viable natural cause. In my opinion, we've observed the activities of advanced civilizations a number of times through our telescopes and other instruments over the past several decades. We simply have not been willing to acknowledge it. Thank you very much for watching. Please like, Please subscribe. Also, please consider joining the folks who have been joining on Patreon recently. It's extremely important to the success of my channel and my ability to keep this content coming to you. And if you can't support me that way, you can also watch my Alien Super Weapons video that I have linked at the end of this video. That one actually had a corporate sponsor, a Star Trek game that I'm very fond of, actually. All you have to do is watch the video. You don't have to play the game, buy it, anything like that. Just watch the video and I get compensated that way. So that would be a heck of a way to help this channel as well. In the meantime, thanks again for watching and as always, stay angry about space.